the day is not done. We still have a lot more storms that are still life-threatening. So we can't stress enough that this is just the beginning of what's to come. Once things kind of quieten it down, uh, I stand up, I kind of look around, make sure things okay, and then I slowly move down the hallway, and once I figure out that things are kind of over, then I take off running up front to try to get up with everybody else and not be down there by myself. In the room, all the power was out, but there was some light, and everyone in the room was covered with a white dust. It was very surreal. The majority of the ceiling tiles had either fallen or been taken up. And then looking over, two students had bloody noses. So, you know, I was asking everybody in the room, are you okay? Check here. And then went to the other two rooms to check on everyone else in the office area. And one of the teachers went to the end of the office area and looked out the door and he shut the door and he said, it's bad. That was probably the most afraid I was because I thought we were stuck. My assistant principal and I went out and gathered about six more staff members that were safely in rooms underneath desks. We stayed in the office area um, as we didn't know what was going to happen. I saw light, so I headed toward the light and it was our cafeteria. As I start back across the cafeteria, the siren went off again. One of the custodians and myself were trying to shut water valves off and we're coming out of one of the mechanic rooms and I said, Paul, we gotta go, there's no one coming. He said, are you sure? And I said, yes, I'm sure. It was a little unsettling because I thought, oh, this is over and it wasn't over. to weave in and out of everything and get up there. We got out and saw her laying there. And she was laying on her back on the side. She'd been pulled out of her car. She'd been thrown by the tornado. I'm honestly fearing the worst. But before we can even get a full assessment and get her onto the backboard, we start getting hit by the hail. I didn't know what we'd be able to do. Kevin just got word saying there's numerous rescue crews being dispatched to the Henryville area. And we understand that uh, Henryville is taking a second hit. You know, we had one tornado come through. You get a calm for a second. You think you're okay. And then another supercell follows it. And just in a matter of moments, they started to deal with gigantic hail. That in itself is rare, but from a human standpoint, that's terrifying to know my family just survived the first one. Now we have to do it all over again. We immediately tried to make our way back home because, you know, looking around, there really wasn't a place for us to safely avoid the storm. But the hail was starting to fall. And after a few seconds, when I realized, oh, we're in the tornado, I was afraid for my life. I looked at the windshield and it cracked. A couple of seconds later, it was just raining hail. So it was almost impossible to see out of the front windshield. that this might be it. The hail, it felt like it was forever. They were big. 
bigger than softballs. And we just kept right on working, trying to roll her onto the backboard. When the hail got to the point that it was hurting, the other firefighter, she found a door for a semi-trailer, and we all held it up. And Erica could have stayed in the truck for protection, but she came straight back to help us. And I was worried about my two nephews in school and really just the whole town. I knew that we needed to focus on her and what she needed as opposed to thinking about everything else. Um, getting a lot of reports trying to confirm the K through 12 school in Henryville. Apparently there are students in the school um, trying to confirm that. Imagine sitting at home as a parent and having someone tell you your children stuck inside of a school and there's a tornado heading right for them. That's something as a meteorologist and as a journalist, you better believe we have to confirm that before releasing that information. And we needed someone to figure out right then and there if there were children still stuck inside that school. The second wave hit and took out the entire front of the building and pretty much everything right up into where we were at. There was one wall between us and the debris. I was in the restroom when the giant hail and the second tornado came through. And it just seemed like, is this really happening? The second tornado tore the second gymnasium roof off and the wall off, and both sides of where we were was completely destroyed. We just heard the impact of the ceiling hitting the gym floor and shooting debris down the hallways. And during that time, I was on radio contact with the elementary, making sure that everybody was safe on their side. I remember calling Troy, and I said, you guys all right? He said, yeah, yeah, I think so. And, you know, I said, well, I smell gas. I said, we got to get out of here. The tornado hit our house, but it wasn't bad. We had a lot of damage, but nothing compared to other people's where their house got leveled. I mean, my house was fine. The second it passed, a buddy of mine told him, I said, Mike, come on, we got to go help people. And then when I started running down the road, and kept hearing something. It almost sounded like a baby crying or like a cat meowing or something like that. So I ran to my neighbor's house and looked to my left and seen uh, Lenora. And all you could see was her head sticking out from underneath the debris. So we go over and we get the wall shoved off over and she's sitting there and blood just streaming all down her face and i was like we got to get her to the house she, you know she's gonna die but then she asked me she's like where's my husband where's wayne so we start looking and i see two feet sticking out from underneath the refrigerator all i could think was i can't believe this 